Hey everybody, Teresa Sigmund here, and I am doing, I think my first impromptu video holding a camera here. I am in the Houston, Texas area, and I've had the privilege of staying in one of my Sew Like a Pro members guest house while I was traveling across the country. And she left me this delightful surprise in the closet. Uh, that showcases some practice wear that she made before she enrolled in my sewing school. And she's only been in a sewing school for about six weeks now, and she's done an amazing job um, um, being able to learn and critique what she's doing. So I am going to share with you some of her notes as well as her assessments on what she did before that she's proud of as well as what she would change next time. So anyway, I just wanted to share with that. Some of that has sewing tips in it. Um, I also offer maybe like a pattern tip. And anyway, I, I thought this was kind of a great experience to uh, things to share with you for those of you who use store-bought patterns or who make practice wear and or maybe trying to just sort of figure things out as you go. So that's it. I'm gonna turn the camera around now and share with you Carol's work. Hey Carol, Teresa here. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you for um, leaving all of these uh, practice garments in here and all your handwritten notes. This was absolutely delightful. So I wanted to comment on a few of them and um, I think the lighting is good enough. Yes, and say overall, these really look very well done. And I am, one, I love your note. These are all my pre-SLP attempts to learn to sew with Lycra and modify patterns. I've noted on each what I learned and what to do better after just a month and a half with Sew Like a Pro, Carol. One of the things I like best about your notes is that you said when you did a good job or when you were proud of something. I'm proud of my double layers and mesh work. Great, because so often we seamstresses and designers are very tough on ourselves and don't take time to critique positively. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is really fun fabric and um, you could very, assuming this fits, you could just attach the trunks and continue on with that. The, I like that you have two leotards that you can mix and match. Love the stripes in the center of that. That's a really fun design element. I can't remember from our conversation that we just had, what of this is um, uh, store-bought patterns and what of it you changed or started from scratch. This skirt, odds are good, can be made so that the skirts hang straight. If you just take apart the side seams and refit it, letting the fabric go where it wants to go. That should be just fine. And then you can pin it back together and then you'll have to trim the waist and the hem again to get them to align properly. I've got a skirt yoke video that I filmed with Cindy, another Sew Like a Pro member in Tennessee a couple months ago, I guess October. And that um, will actually help you a lot with fitting this yoke so that it works. Um, my first attempt with Lycra, uh, nice enough for practice. Yes, I think so also. Yep, fun little flared skirt. So I'm. Uh, your note is, I must not have been precise in my sewing and cutting. The spiral seams have bulges. Maybe try steam pressing. Steam pressing actually won't take that out. This is a pattern issue in that the skirt, the two panel pieces just don't fit. So steam pressing might get it to relax a little bit, but it will pretty much never take care of the issue. So one of two things need to happen, maybe even both things. One, this, there we go, this one we can see a little bit easier. There's my finger. This curvature needs to be less curved and straighter. So if you went in cut off an inch or about two centimeters and just straightened out that curve, then you could possibly attach this panel to it again. I believe you actually cannot though. So what I would do to salvage the skirt, if you have enough fabric, is to set in little godets that start maybe up up here, so eight inches or however many centimeters that is, and just set a godet in. And that way it adds a little more skirt volume and then this buckling won't happen because you're creating a curved shape. 
So essentially it's hanging the way it's cut. So we need, if you want to wear it, just change the shape. And I think this was the skirt you said it was a lot of effort for not a lot of oomph. So adding go days into that, a quarter circle, maybe even three eighths of a circle would help give you a lot more swishing around. Uh, this is a fun pattern. Uh, I'm not a good finisher. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> this needs hems. Um, you know what? Lycra doesn't fray. So, you know what? If you really wanted to wear it, just clean it up with your rotary cutter so that all the seams are nice and even, and then just wear it. If that's really the only thing holding you back on this, rotary cutter the edge and wear it because Lycra is highly durable and it will be just fine. The back buckles, that means I need to let it out at the hips, I think. Very possibly. Or, um, I don't know that you have anything to let out. It does look pretty straight. Mm, yeah, I mean, without having seen you in it, I don't know quite for sure, but I would say that's a fair assessment. You may also need to do a tiny little nip in at the waist, though it looks like you have. It does look like it curves in and back out. This is a great skirt here. The one in your comment says that the fishing line curls more in the front than it does in the back. A lot of that is not anything that you can control really. When you're putting fishing line in a stretch fabric, if you stretch it even remotely the least a little bit different, it will have different amounts of curls, like swoopy curl. Also, because this is a shorter panel, the bias on the skirt changes much more rapidly than the bias on the back skirt, therefore also making the fishing line and the hem look different. And that's the aspect that you can't control. Uh, let's see here, my first skirt yoke with a high-low skirt. I'm proud of that, but I switched the fabric direction on the yoke by accident. Uh, oops. <laughs> oh, I think we've all been there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you have really um, fun fabric choices. These are great. Let's see here. Uh, I really like the asymmetrical and the loose flared sleeve. Uh, Design-wise, this is my personal favorite just because it's what I look good in. <laughs> it's one of my better necklines. Uh, proud of the pattern design except for the sleeve. A princess cut would have been better. Yes, a princess cut will usually be better. However, in this case, it would have ruined this nice little pattern. So what you could maybe do in lieu of a princess especially since it's already cut, is maybe come in and do a dart somewhere. There we go. If it needs it, which it probably does because it's not really cut out for breasts. It's a straight pattern. So depending on your chest size, that's a great shape though. Love, love the asymmetrical, love the pattern. And then you did a flared skirt with this. You said you it has a built-in panty that you did with a double layer lycra. You said the panties did not need to be double layer. Oh, there they are, because it's a lot of fabric at the waistband. Um, I agree with that. That's a good assessment. Um, it looks like it flows really beautifully. It looks like you have you're fluting starting very dramatically. I mean, you can see exactly, oh, there we go, exactly where it starts, and which is perfect for a fluted skirt because fluting just means that it is, or flared, whichever way you want to call it, just means, well, the skirt is fluted so that the, um, the fabric is fluted so that the skirt moves in a flared pattern. It's like one creates the other. So this is cut pretty straight up until right where the volume starts and then bam, that's where you get all your skirt volume. Love that. So that's a really great example of a lovely fluted skirt. Well done, Carol. Thank you for sharing all of these. Yeah, this was really, really fantastic to get to see your work, your pre so like a pro work, and to learn of your assessments before and after. Thanks so much for sharing.